The ocean is an endless expanse, hiding one mystery after another, and it's not our natural habitat. Rightfully, the ocean depths can be called a second world, if not the first one. After all, life originated in water. The aquatic world is strikingly different from existence on land and in the air. It's truly another life on our shared planet. It's hard to imagine just how vast and deep the global ocean is, but one thing we know for sure, the deepest part of the ocean and the darkest secret of the water planet is the Mariana Trench. It's incredible how deep it is. No one ever dreamed or could reach that deep before. It's even deeper than Mount Everest. Imagine if we could place it there, it would be completely submerged and only the world's highest mountain, Mauna Kea in Hawaii, with a height of 11,000 meters would still protrude above the water's surface. Are you amazed? This is just the beginning. You're on the Top Facts channel and we'll show you 20 mysterious things and monsters found in the Mariana Trench thanks to science and technology. Stay tuned, enjoy the viewing, and let's go. First of all, this is not conjecture or speculation. Science has proven and archaeologists have excavated fossilized remains of the most horrifying monsters of the ancient world, including things that you couldn't even fantasize about in a nightmare. Megalodon, a giant shark. There was hardly anyone scarier than this swimming train with jaws and an insatiable appetite for its contemporaries. This apex predator of ancient oceans needed up to two tons of food daily, and even if the fish in those waters were larger, the jaws never stopped working. Nonetheless, this species went extinct, apparently due to a lack of food. So what does this have to do with the Mariana Trench? Quite a lot, specifically the last megalodons on Earth could have remained and hidden there. Imagine, we're asleep and they're still swimming down there. Terrifying. Some enthusiasts are searching for modern evidence of the presence of megalodons in the depths. But there's one but. It's really cold down there. And megalodons were used to warm waters. And then, what does such a behemoth have to fear? If they were alive, they'd likely surface to eat. Nevertheless, it makes for a great movie plot, so we can curl our legs up and hug our popcorn tighter. Global pollution of the world's ocean is hardly a surprise by itself. But during a dive into the Mariana Trench in 2019, the well-known entrepreneur and deep-sea pioneer Victor Vescovo piloted a submarine seven miles down into the ocean. There, he saw not just a variety of plants and animals, but also a darn polyethylene bag with the phrase, thank you for shopping, and candy wrappers scattered at a depth of seven and a half kilometers underwater. Undoubtedly, it was worth diving for such a spectacle. Theoretically, trash should not reach such places, but we've all seen it. This is a serious issue, and frankly, humanity has been dealing with it for decades. Now a massive amount of waste drifts in the water and settles on the seabed so massive that some oceans are turning into watery landfills and islands of trash. Waste from all continents doesn't evaporate. It's not going anywhere in the near future, and new batches arrive every day. You are right that the next association after a sunken Everest in the Mariana Trench is the thought of a shipwreck and the calculation of how long it would take for a doomed ship to sink in those depths. Are you already Googling the formula, weight multiplied by speed plus acceleration thrust, taking into account buoyancy, water resistance? Let us help you consider. When moving in a watery medium, thrust and speed are related by an inverse cubic relationship. Here's what we know. It's astonishing how cruel fortune can be. A predator ship built to kill and sink other warships met its own catastrophic end here. The American destroyer Johnston, measuring 115 meters in length, sank during the battle off Samar in 1944. This was a fierce naval battle with a large number of ships from the Japanese fleet. About half the crew perished, and no one was found among the wreckage. Victor Vescovo, a legendary American entrepreneur and explorer, the fourth person in the world to visit the bottom of the Mariana Trench, led the expedition and personally piloted the submarine to descend to a record 10,928 meters. He reported that the depth the destroyer fell to was extraordinarily deep and almost devoid of oxygen. He found the ruins of the ship, which had plummeted to the depths at immense speed, so all ships that have sunk at that depth are heavily shattered and deformed. 
The destroyer Johnston, lying at the greatest depth of any discovered sunken ship, about seven kilometers underwater, was completely destroyed upon impact with the seabed, taking into account the battle damage it had sustained. But this is a record case, sinking with extreme submersion in the Philippine Sea. This is even deeper than the grave of the Titanic. The liner's wreckage is located in the Atlantic Ocean at a depth of 3,800 meters. But if we talk about a difference of three kilometers underwater, imagine this distance as the ship was sinking, and you'll understand the difference. What is this inexplicable structure doing at the bottom of the deepest place in the ocean? Actually, there is nothing funny about this sea sponge. It is carnivorous. Reaching up to half a meter in height, it consists of a stem and something resembling a garland. This mass is called an ethereoglobule, so it looks like a ping-pong tree, and it is not as harmless as a game of balls. Any small creature that touches the fine hairs on the stem will immediately be trapped and sucked dry. Usually, small crustaceans find themselves stuck in the bristle-like traps. So danger in the ocean can look quite cute. We should be glad that today in the ocean, ping-pong is not being played with us. What draws people's attention to the Mariana Trench is not the history of its formation, but the mysteries hidden in its depths and the creatures capable of surviving there. As for invertebrates, it would be unreal for them to withstand such pressure and cold, but one exception is the Mariana Snail. Let's once again remind ourselves of the depth range of the trench, from 6 to 11,000 meters. This means extreme pressure and cold. Compared to shallow water snailfish, this species has several unusual ways of adapting to the dark environment. Transparent skin without pigments, as well as enlarged organs, thin muscles and bones, and an incomplete skull, see how these features lighten the entire structure. We would never have seen these fish if not for geological exploration work in 2014. So if snailfish have been down there for a long time, and we've only discovered them in the last 10 years, what else interesting remains down there? This octopus got its name after a famous cartoon character. But this Dumbo doesn't really resemble an octopus. It looks more like a squid, though it is the only octopus in the world that lives at such a depth. Even giant squids can't go that far down. If you haven't yet seen the cartoon, Dumbo is the name of an elephant, whose ears resemble the flapping fins of this octopus, and it also almost flies, gliding through eternal darkness. A couple more interesting details. Its size varies from 20 to 30 centimeters, but individuals up to 180 centimeters long have also been encountered. Compared to other octopuses, they are not large, but they are also not harmless as it may seem. Dumbo octopuses are quite ferocious, essentially swallowing their prey whole. It's not about the size, but how they use it. This is a very strange octopus. Its eyes resemble telescopes, and it's the only octopus in the world referred to as a telescope. Unsurprisingly, it has exceptional vision, but these opposite eyes can move independently and can even scan the surroundings an excellent guarantee that its owner will not be caught by enemies unawares. Another interesting fact about them, the depth range where the telescope octopus can live varies from 150 to 2,000 meters in the tropical and subtropical regions of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Thus, the range of the Mariana Trench suits them quite well. The octopus's gelid, transparent body also helps it camouflage well at depth. Plus, they live like a pillar, swimming vertically most of their lives. Because of this, predators also cannot easily see them. And of course, they do not cast shadows. The name amphipod speaks for itself. This super giant amphipod is a special type of crustacean, mainly because they lack hard shells like crabs or shrimp. Instead, their bodies curl vertically. They inhabit only the deepest waters and as the largest of their kind, can reach more than 30 centimeters in length. Not a megalodon, of course, but for its family. This is an achievement, likely due to their deep-sea habitat, where gigantism reigns. Also known as the barrel eye fish, this deep-sea fish has a transparent head and remarkable green eyes, a true wonder. Nature really outdoes itself. This is an example of the greatest adaptations for surviving in less than wonderful conditions. 
The transparent head allows the fish to capture light in the zone of eternal darkness, and the captured light is later used. According to the law of conservation of energy, nothing vanishes without a trace. Its barrel-shaped eyes are often directed upwards to spot predators, and thanks to its sharp vision and head that serves as a projector, the barrel eye fish sees through the darkness better than any night vision device created by science. The Mariana Trench is not just about the contemplation of fantastic views. The visual imagery is only half the story, because the living ocean is full of sounds, coming from both creatures and tectonic plates moving around. Furthermore, scientists have developed ways to better hear the ocean. In the year 2016, one of their experiments recorded a strange metallic creaking sound, as if deep in the ocean, a construction crane is swinging. What do you think it was? Or who? These sounds were made by whales. The range of sounds that a whale can produce varies from low frequencies of 38 hertz to the highest 8,000 hertz. For comparison, the note A on a piano keyboard in the human vocal range is built on a frequency of just 440 to 442 hertz. Humans are capable of distinguishing sounds from 20 to 20,000 hertz, so the whale song caught the attention of scientists. They claim that the low moans were similar to the typical sounds of baleen whales. The funniest thing is that this sound was actually produced by an underwater robot that had learned to mimic whales. Now, let's get acquainted with the wonders and monsters of the deep sea. Brace yourselves, this is not for guppy lovers. So you may say sea cucumbers should generally be found in shallow waters, right? Creatures like these and their close relatives, sea cucumbers, are often washed ashore and can be safely consumed. In some places, they're even considered a delicacy. However, there are more than 1,700 species of sea cucumbers, and many of them carpet the ocean floor, including the Mariana Trench. They play a crucial role in the marine ecosystem, vacuuming and cleaning the seabed of all sorts of debris and decaying matter. Someone has to do it. They're a pure blessing for the ocean. More organic waste accumulates on the ocean floor daily than from all the combined food sources on land. And another interesting fact about these cucumbers, they breathe and excrete waste through the same orifice. Yes, you read that right. Maybe this isn't the most important thing you should learn today, but it's a fact. A sea cucumber breathes through its anus. This inelegant physiological feature protects them from predators. Those, pardon me, just don't understand from which end to approach. So are you considering eating a sea cucumber salad now? Even the deepest depth in the ocean will not save you from zombies. They are everywhere. For example, there is a fungus that parasitizes on carpenter ants and forces them to obey its commands. In the Mariana Trench, there are its own peculiarities. Here you can find zombie worms, waiting for a chance to burrow into the body of a fish or whale to dissolve their bones with acid. This acid releases protein from the bones with the help of bacteria, and somehow the worms feed on it. The infected host may contain dozens, if not hundreds, of these worms scattered all over the body, but the worst is yet to come. Only the female worms do all the work while the males better sit down. They live inside the females. Now we fully appreciate the meaning of the word parasite. Yuck, how disgusting, we will say and move right along. Commonly known as dragonfish or viperfish, this terrifying creature has many names that make one want to avoid visiting the Mariana Trench. These predatory fish are known for their unique hunting habits that allow them to kill prey in a horrifying manner. First, they lure prey using lights. Specialized organs along their belly called photophores that produce light. The fish also has a long spine on its dorsal fin, using its natural light like a fishing lure. The prey, unaware of the danger, is attracted to the light. In these perpetually dark zones, where sunlight doesn't penetrate, creatures are drawn to light like a magnet. But one look at those teeth makes it clear that this is no Aladdin's lamp, but rather a nightmare. Prepare for a shock. These monsters can live up to 40 years. Imagine the hunting experience they acquire over a lifetime. Thankfully, they don't swim in our rivers. Truly a viper fish. 
The most notoriously ugly fish in the world lives around the Mariana Islands in Micronesia. A variant of the anglerfish, also known as the sea devil or fishing fish, is first and foremost terrifying, and secondly, dangerous. This awful predator uses bioluminescent wires protruding from its body to lure prey. Similar to how boats catch shrimp, they are attracted to the light. The devilfish even creates a flashy illumination, flickering to attract its prey. Then, those terrifying teeth come into play, which I personally would never want to see up close. Moreover, nine out of ten of these fish encountered in the ocean are females. Their male counterparts are much smaller, only a few inches long, and ten times smaller than their females. To mate, the males have to literally embed themselves into the females using their teeth. They first fuse with the female's mouth and gradually become an appendage until offspring are produced. They also feed off the female naturally, so the devilfish is a bit of a gigolo as well. There are more than 40 species of hatchetfish, and all of them are very shiny, like metal indeed. Their size doesn't exceed 15 centimeters, and the secret to their survival lies in their unique interaction with light. Their skin reflects light, deceiving predators into seeing something that isn't there or is but in a different location. Understand? That's how it works. A very clever trick. The goblin shark, the ghost shark, or the vampire shark. One of them is among the most unusual creatures you can encounter in the Mariana Trench. They've existed there for millions of years, making them living fossils. Granted, they look terrifying, and if the anglerfish didn't impress you, this fish undoubtedly will complete the picture. The elongated nose of the goblin shark is not a deformity, but a generator. It's full of electromagnetic sensors that can detect even the smallest electrical discharge, like that in the brain of its prey, making it an effective predator. When it finds food, its long nose is not an obstacle. The shark's mouth can extend forward like a trunk or a pouch to swallow the prey whole. Indeed, this creature resembles a mythological monster, a xenomorph, and all its enemies are doomed. We haven't stopped scaring you yet. Next up is something that looks even more terrifying than the fiercest cobra. Meet the frilled shark. In addition to the previously mentioned megalodon, goblin shark, and other terrors, this predator is also to be feared. Its mouth has 20 rows of teeth, more than enough to shred its prey to pieces effortlessly. It's a nightmarish creature, though we don't precisely know how they attack. Their bodies are similar to eels, and their heads resemble those of sharks. It's a mystery how they survive at such depths, since it is a bottom-dwelling fish. All attempts to bring it to the surface have ended in death. The fish dies upon reaching the water's surface. We've given you a bit of a fright, but imagine if all these terrifying creatures swam together. That would give you a complete picture of life in the Mariana Trench. Now, let's add some lanterns and beauty. These transparent beings are not Christmas lights underwater. They are something more than jellyfish. In fact, they are entirely different animals called comb jellies, another riddle of life and its whimsical forms. There are at least 150 species of these ciliary animals, and found fossils suggest their presence on Earth 225 million years ago. If they are still here in the ocean's deepest parts, they might even outlast humanity. Jellyfish are found in all the waters of the world's oceans, so why not in the Mariana Trench? Benthoctopus is a unique variety that dwells at depths lower than 750 meters, and it also uses bioluminescence to lure its prey. As you can see from these images, it's beautiful when they glow, like magical lamps. All this fireworks descending from the dome are their thin tentacles, which they use for movement. This flying saucer only lights up when it's hungry, attracting naive spectators to its theater and mainly feeds on small crustaceans and single-celled organisms. Let's touch once again on the strangest mystery found in the Mariana Trench, life itself, and how it exists there. Scientists have been unable to find an explanation for how it's possible to survive at such depths. The only acceptable justification is the time that all these organisms have had to evolve and adapt to the most varied conditions, even the harshest on Earth. The strongest pressure 
which unfortunately mercilessly crushes man-made high-tech devices, the coldest waters, and uh, life continues, even though they will never get to try living closer to the surface in sunlight. Their bodies are not made for another environment. Deep down, the rules are entirely different. There, instead of the sun, they have their own electricity in their bodies, electromagnetic waves instead of sight, deceptive maneuvers, and transparent bones. But the more we think about it and the more we learn, the more astonishing the world in which we live appears to be for some to fly and for some to swim. Thank you for watching. I hope we've been able to amaze you. Be sure to let us know in the comments below, watch other interesting episodes, and don't forget to rate the video with a like or dislike. Thank you for watching.